about the role of federalism. And then came along the incorporation doctrine follow, that followed it, making clear that the Bill of Rights was going to be enforced by the federal government in the states. Superior and supreme to state law. The next major, in my view, building block, what constitutes the edifice that we have built today to keep this heterogeneous population together and united. And still as late as 1961, when I entered the university as a student here, that promise remained unfulfilled. African Americans were being denied what we now see as basic fundamental human rights enshrined in our Constitution, but doubt it then. In Delaware, we still engaged in segregation. Mrs. Murphy's Law and many others, meaning that if you could deny a black a room, if you had four or fewer rooms to rent, so then that's what animated my desire to get involved in public life, the civil rights movement. The height of this debate on civil rights, a man, one of my heroes, and I mean it literally, I don't use that word very often, applied it only to four people in my life. Majority Leader Mike Mansfield, Iron Mike from Montana. The man who talked me into taking the oath after my wife and daughter were killed and Bowen Hunt were hospitalized for so long. And I decided I wasn't going to be sworn in. He came to me and he gave me the Dutch uncle lecture and said, at that time, only 1,738 men and women had ever served in the Senate, and that I owed it to my deceased wife that I at least come for six months and have the honor of being sworn in. That was 38 years ago. <laughs> he appealed to his Republican counterpart Majority Leader Dirksen in the middle of the debate on civil rights to join him in supporting legislation that was the Civil Rights Act. And he said, we hope in vain if we hope that this issue can be put over safely to another tomorrow, to be dealt with by another generation of senators. I appeal to the distinguished minority leader whose patriotism has always taken precedent over his partisanship to join me, and I know he will, in finding the Senate's best contribution at the time to the resolution of this the gravest of national issues. Senator Dirksen, who I got to meet as a young man when my uncle took me to Washington, just passed him in the hallway like people pass us, Tommy. Senator Dirksen turned and said, I trust that the time will never come in my political career when the waters of when the waters of partisanship will flow so swiftly and so deeply as to obscure my estimate of the national interest. Still, Senator Richard Russell, one of the most powerful members of the United States, and one of the most brilliant. Everyone that I ever served with when I first got there, Tom, said he would have been president but for his view on civil rights. He was from Georgia, and he warned the following. He said, we will resist to the bitter end any measure or any movement which would have a tendency to bring about social equality and intermingling and amalgamation of the races to our southern states. But in the end, a compromise was broken. <coughs> 27 Republicans joined 44 Democrats in voting to end the filibuster, after which a similar coalition voted to pass the Civil Rights Act. Once again, out of partisan fury, a resolution was reached, a resolution that strengthened the fundamental principles of equality and liberty for all that's set forth in our, that's all that's set forth in our founding documents. The fight for civil rights was a catalyzing issue that motivated many of my generation to get involved in public life. In all candor, I wanted to be a senator, in part because I opposed everything I thought I opposed everything that Richard Russell, John Stennis, James O. Eastland, 
Harry F. Byrd, Strong Thurman, Herman Talmadge, all men with whom I served except for Richard Russell. But at the outset, when I first arrived there, I spent my time thinking about and being most angered by their motives. And one day, as a young senator in my first year, I was asked how smart I was. As I said, Senator Mansfield was the guy who took my pulse. I did not want to be in the Senate, as some of you will remember at the time. I did not handle the accident well. 